race fans, I'm Chris Terrell. I'm here from RotorPros.com to bring my weekly daily fantasy NASCAR post-qualifying picks video. Before we get into the picks, if you're not a Rotor Pros member yet, make sure to get over to RotorPros.com, click in the top right-hand corner in the sign-up button, and with a weekly, monthly, or yearly subscription, you're going to get a free trial to come in and check out what we got um, in our community chat. We do one-on-one -on -one coaching. We got skeleton lineups that uh, pretty much goes over our core plays when it comes to all sports we cover nba nhl nfl uh, mlb nascar pga soccer pretty much anything dfs we're there to help you out um, what i've done here in the nascar news channel in our community chat here is just put some of the the top news minds together in nascar that are at the track every week just so we can get a better sense of what's going on at the track get some very important information um, when setting your you know your final lineups going into sundays or saturday night's race so we have a lot to offer at rotorpros.com. Make sure to get over, check it out. Pretty sure you're not going to be disappointed. With that, let's get into this week's picks. This week, we've got the Ticket Guardian 500 from ISM Raceway. It's a one-mile intermediate track. Some classify it as a short track. It's kind of right there in the middle, very fast speeds. The fourth race this season, the difference in aero package here this week. You know, we've got the 2019 rules package. It wasn't at Daytona. It started at Atlanta, added the air ducts in Las Vegas. This week's going to be a little bit different. There are no air ducts, there are no tapered spacers, so we're back up to 750 horsepower, but that rear spoiler is still going to be there, going to create a lot more downforce, and we've already seen that um, create more speeds. Looking at some of the practice and qualifying numbers so far, up about 3 to 4 miles an hour so far on the weekend. Um, a lot of that speed has to do with the corner. Kevin Harvick talked about that. It's a lot like the 2014 package they had here. It's kind of dangerous for our opponents. Um, everyone else in the field because he won both those races in 2014 leading 488 laps so um, could be a lot of number four in the lead here this week so i'm doing this video before final practice i'm actually watching final practice as i record this so we've got first practice which i never weigh into my models we've got qualifying information we've got the first practice from saturday morning uh, 10 lap speeds for that loaded onto the cheat sheet as well, I will have this updated, this final practice, uh, very soon after this practice is over with the final model tallied and all my targets sitting there. I've pretty much got my, my core set, unless something, barring something uh, weird happening here in this final practice. So we can just dive right in and talk about some of the my favorite plays for this week. Of course, I just talked about him. Kevin Harvick, number one on my list this week. He has been amazing here lately. He's finished sixth or better in 11 straight in 13 of his last 15 races, uh, including seven wins and about 1,500 laps led. He's also got nine career wins here. So he's qualifying eighth this week, so he does give us a little bit of place differential value. Came out in that second practice. He was sixth, second in 10-lap averages, which I really like to see here. Um, so he is running really well. He's got It looks like he's got a really good car. and has that little bit of place differential. It's definitely going to be worth paying up for him this week, even though he's the most expensive driver on both sites. Well, it's going to be almost impossible to stack them together, I also like Kyle Busch. Busch is actually number one in my model right now. He has had success here as well. Um, it's been a very good track for him. Nothing like Harvick with all those wins, but he's finished top 10, actually seventh or better in eight straight races here. Um, he won the race here in the fall as well. He qualified fourth this week and showed top, you know, top five speed and one lap average. And then also he he led the field in 10 lap averages in that in that second practice as well. And then we'll just go look at the times here right now while practice is live. We've got Kevin Harvick sitting third, Kyle Busch sitting fourth. Not sure they're not posting the 10 lap averages until it's all done, but I would assume those two are going to be right up near the top. So what I'm probably going to do this week in my lineups is build a core around Harvick, who's the most expensive. Um, building a lineup and then what I'll do is I'll just swap in Kyle Busch and run that exact same lineup and I will do that multiple times I'm probably just going to split them right down the middle maybe 55 45 when it comes to Harvick versus Bush I do like Kev Kevin Harvick just a little bit more this week can't go wrong with Brad Kozlowski here either um, he ranks high he's number two in my model this week. I do like the other two a little bit better, but you can definitely go Brad. He's qualified top five, sixth and 10 lap averages in that second practice, third overall in that practice one, one lap average, and then right now he's sitting sixth. So he's got a lot of speed there. He's been on an incredible run. Um, I talked about in my preview article just about how Logano and Kozlowski seem to have figured out this new package, although it is a little bit different here this week. I lean Kozlowski a little bit over Logano just because of his uh, success here in the past. And then moving on down the list, those are kind of three of my favorite top-tier drivers. 
Moving down a bit, um, I, I think Chase Elliott might become a nice GPP play this week. He's had excellent track history here. Didn't show much speed in practices going and looking at uh, him here in this final practice. He's up to 12, so they did gain some speed um, coming off that second practice, so that's positive. Definitely like him in that low 9K range on DraftKings with his track history. And then Kurt Busch, he's only 12th in my model. Um, I do I haven't factored in the place differential portion in my model yet, but he is starting 16th. He was 10th in practice two, fourth and 10 lap averages, and then looking here at the final practice, he is eighth. Um, probably going to be somewhere around that uh, eighth to fourth and 10 lap averages there as well. I believe I just seen on the monitor, so um, that's positive there as well. So the big difference here at ISM Raceway this week is they have reconfigured it um, for the fall race. And what they did was just looking at a picture here of the track. The start finish line used to be right here on the back stretch with this being turn one, turn two, uh, turn three, and turn four. They've now moved that start finish line all the way over in front of the grandstands here in turn two. What used to be turn two. So now this is turn one, two, and three, and four. So the turns have swapped. Um, it's the first start finish line in any of the tracks that comes in the middle of a turn. It made for some exciting restarts. I was there in the fall. It was an, it was an awesome race for Phoenix. It, very exciting restarts with that dog leg on the back stretch there. Um, you know, getting four or five car wide at times. So it was, it, it's going to lead to some exciting racing most definitely. Going a little bit further down into the mid range here, uh, Suarez, he got, he missed out making it through the first round of qualifying, had some problems with Michael McDowell, um, held him up, and they ended up fighting on pit road. But uh, Suarez has been pretty good here. He's got two top tens in his five races. He crashed out in the fall. But he started 28th this week, showed showed better speed in that in first practice. I think he's probably, you know, got top 15 upside, which for his price in the mid-7K range, especially over there in FanDuel, where it's hard to come by some of those value plays sometimes, he makes a lot of sense in all formats. Um, because he does have some nice place differential upside. And then just kind of looking at his final practice here, he's 18. So he's improved on his speed even more. So I think he can he can get a little bit more out of it going into the into the race throughout the first and second stage. And I think a top 20 is definitely probably going to be his floor with a top 15 being his upside. So he's going to be a core play for me this week. It's probably going to go up in the rankings here a little bit once I start factoring in that final practice as well as the place differential upside there as well. Stenhouse, I like for GPPs this week. He's shown a lot of speed this week. He's gives you that place differential as well. He's around that top 15 speed in second practice. Um, looking at the final practice right now, he's top 20. So a lot of, you know, that might keep him off a lot of people's radars just seeing that practice. He has not been great here. Um, for his career either so the, I think a lot of people may avoid him he does have top 10s in both races in 2017 he was outside the top 20 both races last year he's been very up and down but I think with the speed that he's shown early in the season I think he can be you know a little bit of a lower owned GPP play um, a lot of people are going to be going with uh, Suarez probably this week with that big time place differential a little bit higher up going with Clint Boyer or maybe for a dominator pick Ryan Blaney <clears throat> who I don't mind either Picked up the pole, second in second practice, top 10 speed and 10 lap averages. He's currently second on the board in final practice there as well. So the Penske's cars are showing a lot of speed here again with this new, with all the changes and rule packages and stuff like that so far this season. So banking on them, especially Blaney at 8,295 on FanDuel makes a lot of sense. A couple of the cheaper drivers I'm looking at going down the board here in that bottom range. Ryan Newman, of course, he's been excellent here at the track, starting 18th. Uh, hasn't really shown much of top 20 speed so far on Saturday in the final practices. He's 20th right now. But at 18th, I think they, they definitely have a team that can figure it out. Even if he finishes 15th, 12th to 15th, somewhere there, I think that's a, that's a win at 7,100 on DraftKings, 8,200 on FanDuel. Going down a little bit more, a couple drivers, if you're looking to maybe go uh, the Stars and Scrubs route, David Reagan stands out a little bit. He's starting 29th. He was 28th in second practice. A little bit better when looking at those 10-lap averages. Final practice right now, he's down in 31st. Um, but starting 29th in this field, I think you know he's probably around that 25th place car. He has finished inside his starting position here this week, both times last year, finishing 22nd and then 20th in the playoff race. So he definitely stands out for me. And then finally, I will look at, um, I listed him over here on my targets page, is Matt Tift. If you really want to go, he's 34th in my model right now. Starting starting 30th, but showed top 25 speed 
in both one lap and 10 lap averages in that second practice this morning. And just right now looking at him, he's around 29th. So I think at that 30th, his upside's probably 25th. Um, it's probably where he's sitting, but at 5,400 and 4,000 on FanDuel, if he finishes anywhere uh, ahead of that 30th place finishing position, I think that makes a lot of sense if it allows you to get two of the top tier drivers in your lineup. That concludes the video. If you have any questions, make sure to either join me in the Roller Pros community chat, in the DFSR member chat room, or hit me up on Twitter at Jaeger underscore bombs9, or just comment below uh, the video here, and make sure to like and subscribe. A lot more videos coming along, and if anything happens in final practice, I will definitely update it on my Twitter as well as both of those sites as well. Thank you for watching the video, and let's go get some green screens. Good luck, everyone.